The mighty Brachiosaurus surveys his surroundings. He sees conflict on the land, death on the seas, fear running, and in the distance... Hey, what is that? What? What? Hold on one second. Oh, that's cute. Look at him. Would you like to play a game? I've got 12 PDFs for coloring book pages scattered throughout the internet. And if you can find all 12 of them and print them out and get a picture of all 12 of them, they can all be in one picture, that's fine. And get that picture to me either here on the About page of YouTube, you can find a way to contact me, or on Twitter at 3DP Professor, or on Facebook at 3D Professor. Whoever is the first to get all 12 of these at me are going to get a whole tier of the dino models right now ahead of when completion of the Kickstarter so that you can start printing them out right now. So, good luck. See if you can go find those. Let's talk a little bit about these coloring book pages. One of the advantages of using a general purpose modeling software like Blender for doing my 3D modeling is that without a lot of effort, I can take the skills that I applied in one area and apply it to another part of this software, like for instance, the rendering engine. And without having to relearn the interface or even any of the shortcuts, I can learn some new skills that can take the 3D models that I'm making for my low poly dino Kickstarter and turn them into renders. And with a few deft settings, those 3D models can be turned into, say, a coloring page. How cool is this? I've already handed this coloring page to my kids. Look at what she came up with. She made a point of, of pointing out that the teeth are yellow because he never brushes. I love it. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Now the reason why I did this was because I was kind of away from my 3D printers for a couple of days. It's, it's partially my own fault, but it's really hard to find a power plug in the wilderness. I had some limited access to power so that I could use my computer, but I, I couldn't produce 3D prints. I still wanted to produce something, though, so I decided to take the 3D models that I've been making put them in a scene in Blender, and turn them into some coloring pages. And I want to show you a little bit about how I set that up so that, you know, if you wanted to, you could maybe do it yourself. Let's go take a look at that. So here's the scene that I set up in Blender, and I will pull out from this scene and turn off orthographic view so that you can see what it looks like from a distance. Basically what I did is I took a giant grid and I grabbed random points. In fact, I sometimes even just use mesh select random. And, and here's an interesting trick. If you use select, I had the wrong one, select random, it'll select about 50% of the points. Select random again, it'll select another 50% of the points. Select random again, it'll select about another 50% of the points. So now there's about, yeah, give or take, an eighth of the points not selected. Then hit control i to invert your selection and you've only got a couple of them selected then i kind of deselect the ones in the valley that i wanted and then pulled up on these ones repeated it pulled up again made sure i was using proportional editing and that's how i kind of made a jaggy hill there grabbed all these pulled them down to make the water that's kind of what happened in this spot and then i added a decimate modifier to this whole thing in order to give it that jaggy, low-poly look that we want to match the aesthetic of what we're doing here. Then I took the dinos and plants and scattered them around and set up a couple of different scenes. For instance, this one right here. Now, you'll notice in this scene, though, that I've got a varied background with some of the other dinosaurs in the background. Well, those dinosaurs in the background are a part of their own scene here. So by doing this, by setting up multiple scenes and shooting this whole thing from different angles, I was able to get many, many pages of coloring pages that all had beautiful, varied backgrounds without having to set each one up individually. I, I kind of cheated, but it also makes for neat little Easter eggs if you're looking at one scene to see what's going on with the other ones. Now, 
when I render this, I set this up in color for this video, but it doesn't matter that I did. It wasn't color before, because again, remember, the desired output is a coloring page, which is just black and white lines. And what's best about Blender is with a little bit of settings, it doesn't matter that I've got textures and colors here. We can ignore all of that and just create the lines and make a scene that looks like this. So how did I do that? Well, under the render settings here, I basically turned it to, told it to include nothing but the sky, which I set to white, and freestyle, which are the trying to find lines and draws and cell shading, if you will, that sort of thing right there. And then into passes, I, I you know, basically turned off all the passes. I didn't need any of the other passes and just made sure that my freestyle settings were on. Now, keep in mind that with freestyle, we have some other settings that we can do and, and we can play with those settings a little bit. But basically, that's it. I just turned off everything but the settings. So when I render a new view, let's let's grab a different view. So you notice the stegosauruses were in the background there and they're a part of their own scene right here. Also, the ankylosaurus right here you might notice he is being stalked by a raptor off the corner. I, I really enjoy this kind of Easter eggy putting things together. So which scene do we want to redo? You know, the scene that's kind of in the back of almost every scene are these guys, the pterodactyls back here. Now, if I render this, it's going to, first of all, render the sky. Now, just like Blender, it still does it in little bits and pieces at a time, and it works on the whole thing. Then when it's done rendering the sky, because there's nothing but sky to render, it doesn't need to do reflections, it finishes fast, it goes through and it tries to figure out that invisible geometry to draw lines around it, and then does so, and boom, we get a really cool little coloring page just like that. And all I have to do is zip around my scene and, and take a bunch of pictures. I could potentially add more dinosaurs to these scenes. There are lots of places on this scene that are just kind of, uh, there's not a whole lot pointing at it. Overall, I'm super impressed with this and I'm pleased with the coloring books that are coming out of it. Now, if you would like to get your own coloring pages from the Low Poly Dino, I'm making those available. In this video, I'll put a couple more pages linked directly in the video so that you can start making your full collection of the coloring books from the Low Poly Dino Kickstarter. Color them in, and if you put these online, be sure to use the hashtag Low Poly Dino so that I can find them because I'd love to see what you guys are making uh, coloring out of these. It's 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 a fun little project and wouldn't cost you anything just to go check it out and have some fun with these. So there we go. Something else fun coming out of the Low Poly Dino Kickstarter. And hey, if you're not a backer of the Low Poly Dino Kickstarter, we have more dinos being made all the time. We are up to 21 models at the $25 backing level. The latest one being these really cool palm trees that were added just to add some scenery and variety to your low poly dino playset. So, hey guys, check it out. I hope that you'll back if you're not already. Put in the comments your favorite dinosaur that might not already be in the Kickstarter so that we can maybe think about adding it if the Kickstarter continues to raise more money and reaching more stretch goals. Well, as always, I wanna thank you very much for watching. I wanna thank my Patreon backers because their continued support is as valuable as a Kickstarter is. It's those long-term supporters that I really appreciate and you guys have got a great reward coming for you. So thank you very much for your support. And as always, safety first. I'll see you next time.